The Sumayoshi Monogatari Imaki is a hand scroll painting from the Kamakura period of Japanese history. The Imaki illustrates a 10th century novel that narrates the misadventures of a young girl mistreated by her stepmother and her romance with a high ranking soldier. The work is classified as important cultural property and is preserved at the Tokyo National Museum. But what exactly is an Imaki? An Imaki consists of one or more long rolls of paper narrating a story through texts and paintings. The reader discovers the story by progressively unrolling the scroll with one hand while rewinding it with the other hand so that only a portion of text or images of about 60 centimeters or 24 inches is visible. The themes of the stories were varied. Illustrations of novels, historical chronicles, religious texts, humorous or fantastic anecdotes, and even biographies of famous people. Let's begin the story. A long, long time ago, Chunagon had two wives. One of the wives was a wealthy girl who gave birth to two princesses, Naka no Kimi and San no Kimi. The other wife was from a royal lineage and gave birth to a beautiful daughter who she named Iyahime. When Iyahime was seven years old, her mother passed away. She was raised with her stepsisters, Naka no Kimi and San no Kimi, under the care of her stepmother. Iyahime's wet nurse also passed away, and the wet nurse's daughter, Shiju, came to help look after Iyahime. One day, Shosho, who was the fourth major general and the son of the Minister of the Right, visited Chunagon's house. Shosho had heard of Iyahime's story and wrote Iyahime's love letters from time to time. Iyahime's stepmother intervened and insisted that her daughter, San no Kimi, marry Shosho instead. Shosho refused and sad that Iyahime had not taken any interest in him, left for Sagano. However, his love for Iyahime continued in his heart. Later in the year, Chunagon started moving forward with a marriage proposal between Iyahime and the son of the Minister of the Interior. However, her stepmother was jealous of this marriage proposal and started plotting to have Iyahime become the second wife of an elderly man known as Kazunosuke. Iyahime and Jiju, who heard of this, remembered that her late mother's wet nurse had become a nun and lived in Sumiyoshi. Together, they snuck away from home and found shelter with the nun. In Chunagon's house, where Iyahime's disappearance had become apparent, everyone except Iyahime's stepmother was saddened with grief. Shosho, praying to meet Iyahime again, confined himself in a temple, the canon of Hatsue, to pray. After several days, exhausted by praying without sleep, Shosho fell asleep at the altar. In his dream, Iyahime appeared in his mind and told him that she was in Sumiyoshi. Shosho was overjoyed and immediately traveled to Sumiyoshi. After finally meeting Shosho, Iyahime fell in love with the general and eventually married him, giving birth to a child. Iyahime invited Chunagon to her child's hakamagi and was delighted to reunite with her father after many years. She told Chunagon about her stepmother's many evil deeds and Chunagon was furious. Iyahime's father parted from her stepmother and her stepmother passed away bitter and miserable. The End This Japanese romance story was brought to you by Cultural Café. Cultural Café is an initiative that strives to narrate the stories of our nation's diversity. It hopes to build bridges to keep kindness, common ground, inclusion and empathy alive through storytelling. The next romance story comes from India. The tale of Lorik Chanda narrates the romance of an Ahir hero Lorik and heroine Chanda. Versions of the story recounted across North and Central India, particularly in UP, Bihar, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, emphasize diverse elements of their narrative. Some describe the bravery of Lorik who defends the honor of his tribe, while others state the courage of Chanda who steers the course of the love story between Lorik and herself. There are yet others who describe the many challenges faced by Lorik and Chanda when they elope. The elopement narrative was recreated into a Masnavi, or a Sufi tale with mystical overtones. It was written in the Chandayana, composed by Maulana Daud in the 14th century. 
Although the script of Chandayana is Arabic, the language is Avdi. Chandayana was one of the first significant Sufi poetries of love written in this language and tradition. Daud's Chandayana is also the first time that a Sufi poet uses a description of 12 consecutive months to emphasize the passage of time. Let's begin the story. Chanda is the beautiful daughter of a landlord who is married off to a young one-eyed man described as important. On the advice of her mother-in-law, Chanda flees her husband's house and returns to her parents, where she is hidden away in a room to avoid social stigma. While Chanda is still in her room, a local king hears of her beauty and decides to kidnap her. Chanda's father turns to a mercenary of the Ahi tribe for help. This person is Lorik, the man who will become Chanda's great love. In due course, after tasks posed by Chanda and wars against other kings who are unable to resist the stories of Chanda's beauty, Lorik leaves his wife Mena and elopes with Chanda. After Lorik abandons his wife Mena to elope with Chanda, Mena begins to pine for him. She describes her suffering from one shravan to the next to a sympathetic Brahman leader of a caravan of traders in the hope that he will pass on her message to her estranged husband. In one version of the story, the two wives eventually reconcile with each other and the three begin to live together. In another version, Lorik abandons Chanda as well and wanders for the rest of his life in search of the truth. The End these two romance stories have been brought to you by Cultural Cafe. Cultural Cafe is an initiative that strives to narrate the stories of our nation's diversity. It hopes to build bridges to keep kindness, common ground, inclusion, and empathy alive through storytelling.